Good afternoon, everybody. Type Zero Tech here today. And uh, I just want to say I hope everyone's staying safe out there, staying quarantined. I know it's hard. It's driving me nuts. But the sooner we get this over with, the sooner we can all get back to our normal lives. Um, and if you're watching this, thank you for allowing me to be a part of your quarantine content consumption. Try saying that five times fast. So yeah, today we're gonna to be talking about this little beauty, the Asus Zenfone 6. This has been my main device for eight months now, so I figured it was high time I did a long-term review of it. So yeah, let's get into it. I like to address there's usually at least with me I don't know if this applies to anyone else out there but there's always that period you go through when you buy your new device and then you notice either months or a year later that there's this awesome new feature that seems to be encompassing all these other smartphones that man I wish I would have waited out just to have that one specific feature I feel like I have that every year tech envy it, it happens it, the space just moves too fast not to I don't feel that so much this year I've been seeing all the new flagship phones that have been coming out and it's been unusual. I notice where this phone has a large battery, so does this one. I notice where uh, some try to say I have this infinity edge with the hole punch. I have an uninterrupted screen, no hole punch required. and. The wow factor of the camera still has not worn off on me. That doesn't get old to me. I, you would think eight months in, it would be like, okay, whatever, it's just a thing it does. No, <laughs> for me, it still amazes me that this phone even made it into mass production. So I'm happy to have it here. And as you can see, eight months later, it's still working just fine. Admittedly, there are times when it doesn't fully deploy the first go, I would say it doesn't take me more than three tries to get it to fully deploy and then after that I just go back in and recalibrate it and everything's usually fine. And this phone has seen some drops unfortunately. In fact the b-roll you're probably seeing involves the tempered glass protector over the screen that's not the actual screen. I'm sorry I know I should have taken it off for the sake of the video but Amazon is not delivering in two days like they used to. Uh, screen protector I think is non-essential so, and plus I don't even have Prime anymore. So I won't be getting my screen protector until, what, next, fr not this Friday, next Friday. So yeah, it's gonna be a couple weeks, so I'm not, I, I can't be taking those chances. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not there. This is a small channel, guys. I'm not there yet. I promise though, next time I will be well prepared and I will have some screen protectors on reserve for you. But for now, please bear with me. Anyway. First things first, let's get into the battery life on this thing. This thing rocks a 5,000 milliamp hour battery. There's no exact way to measure it. I can only tell you that eight months in, this definitely has changed my charging habits. I don't need to charge as often anymore. I easily get two days of light use with this device. And even when I do have to charge it, the 18 watt charging makes it where I pretty much have like, what, a good 30, 35% in about 20, 30 minutes. So yeah, that on a 5,000 milliamp hour battery will get you a good bit of time. But um, yeah, battery life uh, has been holding up pretty well. I apparently, according to AccuBattery, there has been some damage. Although this is just an estimate, it's not an exact, but it is telling me that out of the 5,000 milliamp hours I'm supposed to have, I have an estimated capacity of 4,582. So that's 92% of the overall battery health. I'm okay with that. Especially considering when I first got the phone, I did not practice the best charging habits with it. I still charged it overnight while I was asleep, which could have been prevented with this next thing I'm about to tell you about, Power Master. So what Power Master is, is Asus' stock battery management software. You can find it in your settings, but 
pretty much it offers you a different range of options and utilities to help conserve power. It'll tell you when you have apps that are excessively draining power from your device and allows you to shut them down. My favorite is battery care though, which will tell you if you have good charging habits, but more importantly, it has scheduled charging. And what that does is say I go to sleep 10 o'clock the night before and then I wake up at five the next morning, it'll actually lower the charge rate of the device so it finishes charging right before you wake up at five the next morning. That, for someone that wants to have a device for two plus years, is essential. That is good looking out, Asus. That's all I can really say. Appreciate that one. So yeah, had I known about that at the beginning, I probably could have prevented some of the wear and tear on my battery, but it's, regardless, it's gonna happen over time. Your battery will degrade. So that's another reason why I'm happy to even have that much capacity in my device, because I feel like having that much battery power will help me throughout the life of the device. So yeah, this, as far as battery is concerned, is a two year device, easy. Next up is performance. I haven't noticed any lag of my daily usage of the device. I did pay the extra 100 for the eight gigs of RAM, 256 gig storage version, just to mitigate any possible lag in the future. And uh, I can say in the long yet short time I've had it, it's been great. I mean, I think that's to be expected when it's running on last year's flagship processor. It's not gonna age that quickly. So yeah, my daily usage of the device, everything's fine. I'm now on Android 10. They released that update. It was a little rocky at first, but they have been consistent with the updates over time. Something I really do appreciate, especially coming off my essential phone, which was amazing with updates. So Asus, they haven't quite hit that bar yet, but they're they're killing it. They're doing they're doing their thing with it. They haven't abandoned this. I don't do much gaming on the device, to be honest with you. That being said, there was an old favorite I was itching to play for some reason, and I figured why not give you guys a demonstration of it. So uh, even though it is a little old. There have been fan mods to it that have updated the graphics to make it a little more intensive. I don't know if it's supposed to be up to the task of straining the 855, but either way, just, you know, check it out and uh, tell me what you think. I've been trying to reach you. They locked the whole place down. Not quite. The quarantine seal on crossover two days. Get out and fix it behind us. You can, maybe. I'm nowhere near your location. I'm sorry, but I can still help you. Make for the tube, and I'll be with you every step of the way. I promise. Maybe we can both get out of this. Those bastards really screwed us, didn't they? All right, I'm heading that way now. At least maybe we can stop this thing from spreading. <laughs> Okay, I'm not gonna lie. Even with that headphones on, that kind of scared me. <laughs> oh! Tyler, I'm seeing that's not real. Visions? You're having visions? That was just for the video. That wasn't real. That that scream wasn't real at all. <laughs> This is actually one of my favorite weapons in the original Dead Space. Hmm. So 
So yeah, I doubt that was probably pushing the processor, but it, just a quick sample I wanted to show you. If any of you are curious, that was Dead Space. Unfortunately, you can no longer buy it on the App Store, but it is out there if you know where to look. So I guess next up should be the display. I can tell you that it's been all right. It hasn't been amazing. It's not OLED, it's LCD, but for an LCD panel, it looks great. The colors are pretty vibrant. The screen image is crisp. The only issue I have with it most of the time is when I forget to max it out before going outside. It is a little inconvenient when it comes to trying to max it out after the fact because it can get a little hard to see, especially on a very bright day. But it's not really a deal breaker. It's just something I need to remember to do before I leave. So it's whatever. I will say, though, on the next version, I wouldn't mind paying a little extra for that OLED panel. It doesn't have to be high refresh rate. Just give me a basic OLED panel and I'll be a happy man. Next up, I like to talk about the smart key located near the top of the device. This has actually been way more useful than I thought it would be. It's not fully customizable, but if you go into settings, there are a bunch of different options you can set it to, and you can set it for up to three functions. Mine were tap once for do not disturb, double tap to turn on the flashlight, and tap and hold to take a screenshot. So yeah, you can go around there and mess with it any way you want. I really enjoyed that. I also feel I should include this device, beautiful glass back, very slick fingerprint magnet that usually doesn't matter because most of the time I have it in a case. I highly recommend getting a case if you have a phone like this because this thing will slip out of your hands if you're not careful. A lot of people were concerned about the water and dust resistance. I haven't submerged the device because just no, <laughs> why would I do that? But it has been through a few rainstorms. This has gotten wet and it is still working just fine. Last but certainly not least, we gotta talk about the camera. So this arguably was the main selling point of this device. Just the fact that they were bold enough to have this huge moving part on here was a big deal. There are times when the motor does get loose. This is easily remedied by going into quick settings and just pressing retract camera and then it just locks it back in place. So that hasn't really been an issue for me. And keep in mind, this is a after about two or three drops of the device. So yeah, Asus knew what they were doing with this motor, at least in my case. Next up is the camera. This thing is rocking a 48 megapixel Sony sensor and a 13 megapixel ultra wide lens with 125 degree field of view. I'm loving having an ultra wide lens. This is actually my first device with one and this thing is awesome. In daylight, it's great. I don't have that weird distortion effect that a lot of people talk about on the sides of their corners of the uh, photos. So Asus did a great job in dealing with that. I can't recommend it for night mode or for night use or low light situations. It's a, uh, yeah, it could use some improvement in that, but again, it is the weaker lens of the two. So I think that's to be expected. The stock camera software for photos. No, for photos, it's solid. I got to give it its credit on that. It's pretty great. Let's talk about night mode. I have mixed feelings about it. It's inconsistent, but it has its moments where it's just like, wow. So I don't want to write it off completely. I'm still messing around with it. But I think a lot of uh, companies outside of say, Apple and Google have a hard time locking that down. So I think I can shoot them a little bail for that one. I'm not too upset. And plus Gcam is an option on here if you want to go that route which actually brings me to video mode. I wanted to use this as my premier recording device and unfortunately it did not live up to my expectations in that sense. I like the fact that I can hook up an external microphone to it, but the video recording software that's included is just too basic. It doesn't let you lock down the exposure. I can lock down the focus, but not the exposure. I constantly get color shifts on it. And for the type of content I want to deliver, that's not gonna work and it's really weird that it wouldn't let me lock the exposure down especially when if you go into the photo and pro mode on the app it lets you do those very things it locks down the white balance the focus and the exposure so what's up with that Asus can, can we get an update to add that please other than that though video stabilization on all resolutions is awesome that's partly why I didn't want to switch to like Filmic Pro because 
I do realize that's an option. I bought it and I've tried it. I don't get full compatibility with it. So there are some things you're missing. You're not able to use the ultra wide lens with it. You're not able to record 60 FPS in any resolution. So yeah, if either Asus wants to update their camera app or work with the Filmic Pro guys to make it more compatible with theirs, I'd really appreciate it because there's a lot of potential with this device. Hopefully they keep this flip camera module because again, I will never get tired of this thing. You know, that wow factor is insane. Every time I show it to my coworkers or anyone, they're just like, I did not know Android phones could do that. You know now, you know now. Another feature that caught me by surprise that I really wasn't expecting is auto panoramic mode. I've never taken panoramics on a device before this one. It's just, the thoughts never occurred to me and it just seems like it's a lot of work. It's a, you know, you gotta sit there and you gotta go. Who's trying to do all that? Not me. But this phone actually takes all the work out of your hands and does it automatically using the motors in the module. So all you have to do is just hold it up, keep it steady, and the motors will gradually move around you to take a nice 180 degree photo. That is insane. I, that just, wow. Um, oh, and before I forget, if Asus in the future, if you bring out that Zenfone 7 and go this route again, hopefully you do, please, please, please give us USB-C 3.0 at least. USB 2.0 is not cutting it when you're trying to transfer a large batch of 4K files. The thing takes a good minute and come on, just, USB 3.0. I know you want to keep costs low, but that USB 3.0 is essential. That that should be on here. Other than that, everything else has uh, been pretty satisfactory. Um, it's, it's still strange to me that I'm in 2020 right now, and every time I look at a phone, I just compare it to this one. I'm just like, oh, I got that. Oh, my phone does that better. I know there's more to a device than the spec sheet. But I will say it does bring a smile to my face knowing that a $1,400 phone's selfie camera at 40 megapixels is outspecced by my five, well, my $600 48 megapixel selfie camera. And I think that's one of the biggest advantages of Asus going this route. Your camera that might not be, your rear facing camera that might not be as competitive the year after is still one of the best as a selfie option the next. But yeah, you have your competitors that can't put these huge sensors on these front facing screens because they want to try to preserve as much of the screen real estate as possible. And Asus effectively found a way around that. So their camera technically can still be relevant as one of the best selfie shooters, even in 2020. Now again, that all comes up to, you know, your image processing and how your software handles it. But for the way I use my camera, and I think I am a little more technologically inclined than most where I know how to adjust the exposure in certain settings to maximize the image, this is great. Like, this is perfect. I know for your average consumer, they just wanna be able to point and shoot, so that's something Asus will have to work on improving in the future, but the potential is there. Like I said, I let my niece use this for one of her videos, and I was just looking and seeing why this device isn't more popular to the social media crowd. You have all this uninhibited screen space to work with, and you get a higher quality camera to produce your content with. I just feel like it's it's strange. So I really hope Asus tries uh, again with the Asus Zenfone 7 and they don't just abandon this concept. Or even if they don't go with the Asus Zenfone 7, I hope they do something, because there's so much potential to be had with a device like this, and I just want to see where it keeps going from here. But yeah, this thing will slip out of your hands if you're not careful. <laughs> well, that makes drop number four. <laughs> oh, man. And see how this camera is now loose? I guess this is a good example. So it's loose after that. We're just going to press retract camera. See, it's locked in. Who did not expect to do that. Anyway, guys, I hope everyone's staying safe. Stay cool. Thank you for watching. Let me know what you think of this video. You know, leave a like if you liked it. Subscribe, leave a comment, tell me what you think, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching and have a good one.